An average car has a suitcase-size engine weighing around 300 pounds. A jet engine is a couple of tons heavy, and several people could fit inside. But the most powerful engine out there is the size of your fist and weighs no more than a can of soup. It's the human heart. To start our journey, we need to get inside a human body. This is Jerry. We'll check out his ticker while he's fast asleep. We get inside through Jerry's mouth. Man, this guy snores loud. Cover your ears! Jerry breathes the air in, and we rush into his lungs. Let's hold on to this oxygen molecule as it hitches a ride on a red blood cell. Great! We've made it into the blood! Yeah, not much elbow room here. The walls of the tunnel will get bigger as we move from the capillaries onto slightly bigger venules, and then into a vein toward the heart. These blood vessels remind me of water park slides, only they're soft and flexible. See how they can stretch and narrow? The blood moves with every heartbeat, which means we'll get to the engine sooner or later. Plus, the heart is right around the corner, packed snugly in between your lungs so it can get that oxygen-rich blood faster and send it throughout the body. For now, we're moving pretty slow, about walking pace. Jerry's sleeping, so his heartbeats are calm. Oh, hear that? It's the last snooze on Jerry's alarm clock. He glances at the time and realizes he's late for work. His brain immediately tells his body to release a dose of adrenaline. This gets the blood pumping faster, so get ready! Things are about to speed up! His heart rate increases, blood pressure goes up. With his muscles full of oxygen-rich blood, he leaps out of the bed in an instant. And we zoom closer to our goal. The walls get wider and wider, we're almost there! Outside of this tunnel, you'd see we're approaching a cage. Your precious heart and lungs need protection in a strong shield, your ribs. We're in a main vein and whoosh, welcome to the heart! The heart is essentially a big muscle that's constantly at work. It beats 100,000 times a day, close to 40 million times a year, and over 2 billion in a lifetime. With each of those beats, a third of a cup of blood moves through the heart. In a day, that's up to 2,000 gallons. Any other engine would break down under such loads, but not the incredible human heart. Think of your heart like a big food delivery center. It gets fresh supplies from the lungs, we'll call them our local farmers. Your red blood cells are like delivery trucks, taking supplies throughout the city, also known as your body. It gets to where it needs to go via the roads that are your blood cells. They lead to your organs, tissues, and down to the cells. All demand a constant supply of oxygen. We have a lot of oxygen because we got here when Jerry breathed in. The heart makes a beat, a valve opens like a gate, and we go from the left atrium down into the bigger left ventricle. The heart makes one more beat and pushes the blood out. We make an exit through the huge, foot-long aorta. And we're now officially going away from the heart via the artery highway. Hey, don't worry, we'll be back soon enough. We're rushing fast through the body delivering this oxygen supply to every organ, muscle, tissue, and cell. Oxygen delivery for the liver! <laughs> Please sign here. I've got an oxygen package for the kidneys. Here you go! Our tunnel gets smaller and smaller as we get off the main artery highway, onto smaller arterial street, and finally into tiny alley-like capillaries. Remember them? It seems Jerry's going up the stairs, so his leg muscles just ordered a huge supply, more than what they'd need when he's resting. The heart pumps harder, and the blood pressure's increasing. Ooh, hold on tight! All the citizens of this town get a belly full of the good stuff, wipe their mouths, if they had one, and hand over carbon dioxide like you'd throw a chicken bone down on your plate after eating all the meat. Yep, the oxygen to carbon dioxide exchange doesn't just happen in your lungs it's going on at the cellular level. That being said, we now have a truck full, <clears throat> I mean, blood full of CO2. What's next? Well, we need to get back on the vein freeway toward the heart. Just like we did in the lungs, it starts in the capillaries and our tunnel gets bigger from there. You might have noticed that these roads all look the same. But any anatomy textbook would have you believe that veins are blue and arteries are red. Nope, blood's always red. It might just be a little brighter when it's full of oxygen and moving through the arteries. But that blue, or sometimes green hue, you see through your skin is because of the effect of light waves. Shorter blue ones are more easily reflected back to your eye. 
Anyway, all these roads, 60,000 miles of them, enough to wrap around the Earth twice, lead to and from one place in this city, the heart. We're back! But this time, we've come into the right part. Here we flow through the valve and get back into the red tunnel, the artery. Stop! But we can't drive through the artery without oxygen. Too late, we're on the way. But this time, we're not rushing all over the body. We're headed to a place where we'll finally get rid of this carbon dioxide and restock on some fresh oxygen. The lungs. Jerry exhales, goodbye CO2, and takes another breath in. Happy with a new supply of oxygen, we head back over to the left part of the heart through a vein, and the journey starts over. Each time you breathe, this is what's happening in your body. But there's one thing we haven't covered. What powers the powerhouse? Well, take a drive to your local power station, and you've got your answer. Electricity. It's what makes the heart beat. Hey, check it out. We'll head to a special department in Jerry's ticker called the sinus node. Oh, the front door has a warning, danger, and a lightning bolt on it. Careful, don't touch anything. This is where complex chemical reactions occur and create an electrical impulse. Unlike, say, your leg or arm muscles, all the muscle tissue in your heart is connected. So this electrical impulse strikes the whole heart. Any living tissue contracts thanks to the electricity, and the heart is no exception. It tightens like a fist, then relaxes. The impulse strikes and the heart contracts again. With each contraction, blood enters and leaves one of the four chambers. And that's how it all works. Okay, that was the simplified version, but you got the gist. And, as they say, the beat goes on.